In today's video, I'm gonna show you my method for creating cartoony sketched graphics in Photoshop. I've used some of these techniques to design for Childish Gambino and Gucci Mane, so I'm hyped to show you. Let's jump into it. So here's the design we're gonna use for inspiration today. I was just looking at vintage chief shirts for another project. This popped up, thought it was dope and something I've never done before. So this is the graphic that I created based on that. And so we're gonna recreate this. So the first thing we'll do is grab this photo of Patrick Mahomes, jump into Google. I just searched by images larger than two megapixels. Thought it was good because it's an action pose similar to the Joe Montana reference. So we'll just right click, copy image back to our canvas, command V, we'll paste it in. For starters, we'll just cut out the background. We'll go to window, properties, and then I'll just use the remove background feature. It usually works pretty well for sports photos, especially when there's like blurry backgrounds. You can usually get a pretty clean cutout just by doing that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this photo a few times because we're gonna use it in a few different ways. So I'll just make sure this layer is highlighted. Command J, let's go three times so we have four copies in total. Then I'll just hide these. So the first thing I'll do is make sure this layer thumbnail is selected versus having the layer mask thumbnail selected. So that's important, make sure you're selecting that. And then I'm going to make sure that black and white is the foreground over here. So I'll just hit this little, these little swatches right here that sets it back to the default. And then the first thing we'll do is go to filter filter gallery. So the first effect you'll wanna add is stamp and you can find that under sketch right here. So you'll click stamp and then you can change these settings to whatever you want. It's, it's really gonna depend on what the photo is. This is what I'm using, it's 30 for light dark balance and that smoothness of six. So you'll wanna mess around with these values um, you know, depending on what your photos are. At the bottom you see this plus that says new effect layer, click that and then highlight the bottom one, and we'll change that to photocopy. And I'm going to change the detail to 12, and then I'll bring darkness down to seven. So essentially what we're doing here is creating more of like a coloring book effect. Um, that is the goal with this style because we are gonna utilize some different methods of coloring it in. So what you really wanna look at is how to create the most um, sort of like contrast without losing details if that makes sense so you want like as much as many like connected lines as possible so it does mimic that coloring book style and so that's going to mean playing around with detail and darkness and stamp to um, get that effect with your photo so this works for me i'm going to run with this and click ok so now that we've got this coloring book effect we can actually add a stroke around the whole thing because we are using a layer mask so I'll double click into this layer. I'll click stroke over here on the left side and then I'll change it to outside. And we'll probably go, yeah, maybe six will work. Maybe a little, yeah, six, cool. So now that we've got this coloring book sort of effect pretty dialed in, we're going to move on to adding more shadows and sort of giving it this like graphic pen sort of look. So we'll go back to filter, filter gallery. The first thing we'll do is delete the photocopy layer and then we're gonna change stamp to graphic pen. So essentially what we're trying to do here is just sort of strike a balance where we can see a little bit of that graphic pen coming through, but we're not going full on like aha 80s music video style. Um, so I'm gonna bring in a little bit more of the light dark balance. Stroke length, I usually just keep it at 15, just sort of max it out. And if you want, you could always mess around with right diagonal, horizontal, left diagonal, vertical, whatever you wanna do. I think I'll be good with this, you know, it just has a little bit of detail and we're gonna thicken it up anyways. So I'll click okay. Next, I'll make sure this layer thumbnail is selected and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. In past videos, I've 1000% said Gaussian blur because no one told me it was Gaussian. It's Gaussian, Gaussian blur, cool. Okay, so I'm just going to use a radius of one pixels and click okay. The next thing I'll do is go to image adjustments threshold. Now this is definitely a destructive method, but you know, this style is meant to be pretty loose. And so I'm just gonna lean into it, get a little destructive. Um, so I'm just gonna increase this so it just adds in a little bit more detail thickens up those lines 
that should do it click OK. Next, I'm going to bring back this layer at the top and I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. So now you can see, you know, all the detail that we added with that extra layer. Now I'm going to group both of these layers together. I'll make sure this top one is highlighted. Hold down the shift key, click this layer, command or control G, put them in their own group. And then I'm going to change the whole group to multiply. So now when I add back the full color photo, you can see these details. Uh, that we added in and they're on their own layer. So here's where things get even more interesting. This is sort of a method that I just created um, specifically for this video. Before we move on, I have to tell you about the GFX World online community. Our members range from t-shirt designers to clothing brand owners, print shops, everyone from seasoned pros to beginners just getting started. That means you can ask questions and get feedback or advice from industry professionals. You've got a couple options depending on how serious you want to take this. You can join the premium community, which gives you access to exclusive tutorials and design tools, the raw Photoshop design files, from all of my new tutorials, as well as weekly calls with me and other designers where you can ask questions and get feedback directly. In the free community, you'll be able to interact with others and get access to a rotating list of freebies. There, you'll also find my 101 course on the basics of t-shirt design in Photoshop. I hope I see you there. Now back to the tutorial. I thought it worked pretty well. You can let me know what you think, but essentially you just highlight this uh, full color image and then at the bottom of the layers panel, go to posterize and then you can essentially just adjust this probably just down to two and so even like right there like that's a pretty good like cartoon effect the next thing i'm going to do is actually merge these two layers together so we've got our posterized layer and our full color layer highlight both of them and then right click merge layers so from here things are going to start to feel a little bit more like we're painting and less like you know we're using different effects and groups and all that because we created this posterized effect it's pretty much down to the pixel so we can start to pick out some individual colors and changing them to match what we see on the left hand side so the first thing i'll do is grab the magic wand tool over here on the left i'll make sure that tolerance is set to 12 and then anti-alias and contiguous are not checked. And then I'll just go in, highlight this layer, and like, we'll start with the red, right? Cause that's pretty prominent. So I'll click the red in the helmet. And then I see a little bit of pink here too. So I'll click that and then I'll hit command J and that's gonna put a layer of red right here. And then I can change that by double clicking on that layer, checking color overlay and then I'll change it to this red we see over on the left. So next we'll grab these yellow values, hit Command J. So now we've got the jersey basically locked in. So now what we could do is basically delete all of this yellow and red from his face and his hands here, and then like draw in the skin tones, or we could combine these two layers and just make that the skin tone. So I'll show you what I mean. Essentially, if we just duplicate these two layers, highlight them, Command J, and then merge them together. Now I can double click, color overlay, change that to this color. And then now if I just go in and like lasso around these, and I'll just be like, I'm gonna be pretty loose with it, but lasso around these. And go over here, lasso around his hand. Lasso around his hand here. And I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm being super loose with this because that is the style we're going for anyways. Now I'm going to right click and select inverse and then I'll just delete everything else. So now we didn't need to like manually paint in really anything with his skin tones. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do is go in here and lasso around the whites of his eyes because that just looks weird. So I'm just gonna sort of create that shape, gonna stick to like being pretty loose with this and then I'll just delete every layer there. So it's just the white of his eyes showing. So, I mean, you know, let's look at the original photo. We've come a long way, you know, we've gone from this to this. So we're definitely on our way. Now, the next thing we need to do is let's color in this football. So I'm gonna grab this brown color right here and I'll go down to this bottom layer and I'll create a new layer, clicking the uh, plus down here. 
move that to the bottom. So I'm just gonna paint this in. Again, keeping it pretty loose. Doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, it can be as perfect as you want if you wanna stay perfectly within the lines. That's cool. That's not what I'm trying to do with this style. One thing I'm noticing is that there's a lot of white right here. And I think that's just because in the photo, like that part, like maybe the sun was like hitting his nose and it's like making it look like he's wearing like a nose strip or something. So I'm gonna go down to this skin tones layer and I'm gonna grab this color and I'm just gonna paint this in manually. So as I mentioned before, since we're working down to the pixel at any time, I could grab any of these colors and isolate them on their own. So that being said, I have no problem just like grouping everything together, command G, and then I'll duplicate it, and then I'll just merge this group so that now I can just work with this element on its own. It's just gonna make things a lot easier. And as long as I have it in my head that I'm gonna be working down to the pixel, um, it's totally fine. So the next thing we gotta do is get Patrick into this like um, arrowhead shape in the background. It's just like a subtle detail. Like I could have very easily used like a circle, but this just like looks dope. And it is along the lines of what was done um, on this original reference. So we're gonna jump back into Google Chrome and I went to brandsoftheworld.com. Bro, this site has been around for so long. Like I've been using this forever and it's essentially just like an ongoing growing collection of vector logos, okay? So this is not for like commercial use or anything like that. It's for personal projects only. I'm sure that's what this says right here, um, but that's what we're using it for. This is just a personal project. So I'm gonna hit download and that's going to download, uh, let's see, what's it gonna do? An EPS file, cool, okay. So I'm gonna jump back out to my desktop and then I'll just open it up in Photoshop. Since the format is EPS, that means it's a vector file and when we open it in Photoshop, it rasterizes. So it gives you the option of opening it at whatever size you want, basically. And I'm gonna go with 15 because that's the width of our canvas, so that's like sort of maxing out the size. So I'll click OK, I'm gonna grab just like the rectangular marquee tool. It's interesting that it has the registration marks. I'm not sure why that is. I'll hit Command C once these this uh, selection is made. Jump back to our canvas. I'm going to just highlight the layer underneath our main image, and I'm gonna actually change the name of this layer while we're at it. Patrick Main. Then I'm gonna hit Command V to paste in that uh, arrowhead and then I'm gonna move it underneath Patrick. So how do we get the image to look like it's embedded into the frame? What I'll do is hide this layer, and then I'll go down and highlight the arrowhead, and I'll just change the name of that. And I'm gonna get rid of this KC logo. Um, I'll just use the brush tool, and I'll brush it with white, so that the whole thing will just be white and black, right? So make the brush a little bit bigger, and just really quickly brush it out. There's a million methods you could have just used to do that, but this is the one I've chosen. So, so now we've just got a black and white uh, arrowhead essentially. So now if I bring this layer back and then right click, create clipping mask, it's going to clip into the shape overall. It clips into the black and the white, right? So what you'll wanna do is just use one of the, the marquee tools or the lasso tool, it doesn't matter, but you'll just like make a selection that covers the top half of the image, and then I'll highlight the Patrick main and hit Command J, and that's gonna pop that area outside of the frame. Now we still have a problem down here because it's still, um, it's still clipping to the black and white on the bottom, right? So how do we fix that? Same method, except we'll do it for the bottom of the arrowhead. So I'll just use the lasso tool right here, Command J, that's gonna pop it up, but we can't see it because it's being covered right now. And then I'll just use the magic wand tool and get rid of the white and then bring uh, clip this back into the arrowhead. So I'm sorry if that was hard to follow. If you need to replay it, go for it. Watch it as many times as you need because it is, it's a lot of it is muscle memory. Um, but that essentially is how you can pop images outside of shapes and then adjust it as you need to. The next thing I'll do is bring in this smaller photo of Patrick and we'll use the same sort of method we used on this larger image to create this as well.
So that should work for the smaller image. I did just notice that the arrowhead is like noticeably a lot larger on the right side. That's just like an oversight on my part. So I'm just going to shrink it down like this and then move it over. So it's closer to how it looks on that left side. One other thing I fixed is I noticed that Patrick's teeth were like tan on this left side. And so I fixed that over here on the right. Sorry, Patrick. So let's get all the layers of the little photo into their own group. And so I'll put Patrick, smaller photo, cool. Okay, so now we can move that piece around too. Really, this is just about like building different little elements out, right? That we can just move around freely, just makes life a lot easier. I think I'm gonna end up merging this, um, which is totally fine, but yeah, I'll duplicate it and then I'll just right click merge group. Now I'm gonna reposition this photo here and then I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and just draw a box out and then we will put the box underneath the smaller photo, right click the smaller photo layer and then create clipping mask. And then I'm going to just grab the top of where his head would be highlight that layer and command J and that's gonna throw it outside of it. Now I'm going to add the stroke around the box and we'll use inside position, eight pixels, sure, that looks good. I'm gonna select around his elbow too so we can throw that to the outside and then I'll just merge these two top layers as sort of like the two things that are popping outside of this box, right? Now I'm going to duplicate this rectangle layer change the color to red and then just using um, the arrow keys and holding down shift i'm just going to shift this over and i'll probably remove the stroke do you want to keep it or you want to leave it i left it off over here but i kind of like the way it looks actually on this one so i don't know cool i'm gonna keep it okay so let's merge all of the elements again of this smaller photo together so like you just gotta keep creating, if you wanna stay organized, at least you gotta keep creating these like groups, right? Patrick, smaller photo frame, all right? So now I can move this around freely and we'll bump it down a bit, bump it over. Next, we'll bring in this AFC Championship trophy. This is gonna take a lot less time to do because we're just using blue and not like red and yellow and all this other stuff. We're gonna see how Remove Background does. It's might be a little bit tricky because parts of this are probably gonna come out of it because it's white in the background and then like this is just a big chunk of white here. So see, Remove Background. Let's move it up so we can see. Yeah, so we lost a big chunk of it. We can just use the brush tool and paint with white and bring back everything on the inside there. So now when we move it, it should be good. So with this trophy, I'm gonna approach the effects and the coloring method a little bit differently. I'm not gonna use like photocopy and graphic pen or, or, or even posterize. Um, it just is not needed because there's, there's just not as many details or colors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just duplicate this layer. Actually first let's rename it. So rename it trophy, and then duplicate it hide that bottom layer and then I'll go to filter filter gallery and we're just going to use stamp and I'm going to basically like almost max out the light dark balance I'm going to keep the smoothness at six and we don't need it to fully connect because we're going to add that stroke to it so I'll click OK and then I'll double click the trophy layer add that stroke six point on the inside actually should make it on the outside yeah make it on the outside click OK and then I'm going to duplicate this, this uh, bottom original layer again. I'm gonna bring it, uh, actually I'm gonna keep it where it is. And then I'm gonna change this layer, the blending mode to multiply. And then with this layer, I'm gonna go to image adjustments threshold. I'm gonna bring the threshold up so we can start to get, like we have to look at the black right now as if it's gonna be blue. And so I'm gonna bring that up we want to keep some of those highlights, click OK. And then I'm going to double click this layer and do a color overlay with screen and that blue color, right? Whoops, that blue color, right? So now we didn't use as much blue in this as we did on the, uh, the left side, but I like it. I think it looks good. I don't really see a need to redo it. So now we've got the trophy. 
I'm gonna group all these layers and put trophy, hit command, save to make sure we're always saving as we're going through here. So now what's left to do? We gotta add the Mahomes text, we gotta add the little logos, and then the little details uh, here, like the little sketched elements, and then we'll be good. So let's add in, let's just go from the bottom to the top, um, with the exception of the little sketch stuff, because I'm gonna add that last. We'll start with this Chiefs text right here. So we'll jump back out to Google. I just Googled Chiefs logo, and I couldn't find like a vector version very quickly to be honest I'm sure like if I if I search long enough I could find one but this is pretty big so I'm just gonna bring this into Illustrator and just do like a vector trace right so we'll go to we'll make sure this is highlighted and then we've got image trace right here so if you don't see this just go to window image trace and you can bring that up now what I usually do is I'll click ignore color and then I'll just hit trace. Next, I'll go to object, expand, and I'll make sure both of these are checked and I'll click okay. And that's essentially going to give me this as like one solid logo that's vectorized, right? And I'm sure it's not perfect. I'm sure if I zoom in, it looks a little bit sketchy or whatever, it actually looks decent, but like right here, like this should be sharp, you know what I mean? But for our purposes, totally fine. So I'm going to command C, copy this, jump back into Photoshop, Go to the top layer, Command V, and Smart Object, click OK. And now we can just size this down and add it here. Move it over, double click, we'll change it to this red color right here. Make sure this blend mode is back to normal. It's still screen from what we did with the trophy. Then I'll duplicate this layer. Actually, I'll rename it <laughs> Chiefs. Okay, duplicate it, change the bottom one to black. And that's gonna be like our drop shadow. You could just use the drop shadow in the layer styles. Doesn't matter, I just like doing this. I think it's actually faster. Cool, okay. So now we've got our chiefs text. Let's group that together, put chiefs. Right, I'm gonna move it up a little bit so it's closer to this original. And then it looks like we'll probably have to move photo down a bit and I'll actually move it over because I want to keep this basic shape as like a rectangle for the most part. So I'll move it over a little bit. So now let's bring in this logo that we actually used in the background here so that file should still be open right here. Command C will copy it and Command V to paste it in and I'll just size it down. If you want to make it a smart object before you size it down go for it i don't think it matters in this case cool and then i'm just gonna grab all of the red from right here with the magic wand tool command j and i'll change that red to this more like brick red color we're using and then i'll just merge these two layers together it's fun okay so now i've got this on its own layer so let's rename this layer arrowhead logo and then we'll go down to our very bottom layer because now we need to get into the text Today's video is brought to you by the Ultimate T-Shirt Design Toolkit. Over my 10 plus years of professional design, I've developed graphic tools that have helped me create official merch for some of the biggest artists on the planet. I put everything into a giant bundle that you can download and get access to these same design tools. There's everything from templates to design elements, text and photo presets, high-res mock-ups, and so much more. I call it the best kept secret in t-shirt design and it's helped thousands of designers and clothing brand owners elevate their graphics. When you're ready to skyrocket your designs, it'll be waiting. Now back to the tutorial. So I'll show you where I found this particular font that I used. Um, you know, is it exactly like this? No. Is it like pretty close and like within the vibe of that style? Absolutely. I searched under the comic category right here on the left and literally on the first page, I saw this kids magazine and I thought it was pretty solid. So I downloaded it and that's what we're using in this graphic. So we'll start by grabbing the horizontal type tool, click in and I'll just type out an M. The first thing we're gonna worry about is just getting the uh, layer style dialed in for the first letter. And then we'll be able to just like duplicate them one after another. 
and create this text. So we'll double click this letter M and that's gonna bring up the layer styles. And I'm just going to reset to the default list so that we're really starting from scratch here and just build out this uh, style. So the first thing we'll add is a stroke around the outside and I'll just leave it black so I can see what I'm doing because we're gonna change it to um, white. So we'll go with 12 pixels, that looks good. Change it to white, click the plus, and that'll add another stroke. And that is going to be yellow. So we'll change the color right away to this yellow color. Bump it up. And I'm just sort of eyeballing. 32 looks decent, okay. Add another stroke, and this is gonna be black. And we're gonna probably keep it close to 32, maybe like 42. We could be mathematical and do 44. Sometimes I try to think like, well, if this is 12 and this is 32, then this should be 44. Like, bro, you're designing like a cartoon uh, Kansas City Chief shirt. I don't think like you need to think that deep about it. So 49, all right, that looks good to me. So from here, we have to duplicate out this M um, and do each letter individually. That's how you can get the overlapping effect here. So I'm just going to hide these effects so that the layer panel, the layer panel doesn't get super long. We'll duplicate the M and we'll just slide it over. I'm holding down the shift key so that I can slide it over like and keep it aligned. And I'll change this to A and you can start tilting stuff like and start sort of shaping the text the way you want it. So I'll tilt this M over a little bit here, bring the A down, maybe to there. All right, so now I'm gonna grab all these letters and I'm just, I'm not gonna hold down the shift key. I'm just going to drag it over just so it like kind of sits in here nicely. And it's cartoony, so like if things are skewed, that's fine, like it's meant to sort of look cartoonish. I'm cool with that. I'm going to get all of this into a group and then I'm gonna duplicate the group. And on the bottom layer, let's first change this Mahomes. And then I'm gonna change this to Mahomes, blue, Mahomes, all caps, Mahomes, blue. Now I'll double click this group, color overlay of blue. And then just holding down the shift key, I'll use the arrows and just bump it over. Actually, I'm just gonna bump it straight down. Cool, yeah, that looks better. Then I'm going to move both of these out because this is changing, you know, now that you add the blue, Maybe you want to change how the text looks a little bit. It's just sort of like getting it to that place where, you know, it looks cool to you, looks cool to the eye. And that's just a skill that you develop over time. And the choices that I make are going to be different than what you make. It's art, baby. All right, so now let's get this Super Bowl 58 text in here. We'll click. And for this, I used a font called Comic Book Commando. Okay, and I'll link to, to um, both of these fonts in the description. Super Bowl 58, AKA LV, I, 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 bound. All right, we'll size it down and we'll change it to black. And you could do that with a color overlay or just like natively using the foreground color, right? And then I actually did a little arch. So up at the top, I clicked create warped text and then I changed it to arch, arched it a little bit. And then I think I like bowed it out, like using vertical distortion, like that down. So it just sort of sit nicely across those letters. Cool. And looks a little bit bigger than it does on the left. And it looks good to me. I'm gonna tilt it a little bit down here. Cool. Now for some good and bad news, depending on where you're at with this stuff. So I used generative fill to create this uh, cartoon speech bubble and this little sort of like crumpled up thing over here. And it actually made this too. It was cool because it actually informed me a little bit more. And that's when I went in and actually drew in all these little other little lines like this motion line here and all that. And even this stuff up here. So in that sense, it was like, cool like i'm glad that it generated exactly what it did because it gave me more ideas that i could do um but the bad news is 
you know, I can't generate this exactly over here because that's not how it works. So we're just gonna do the method I did the first time and see what it comes up with. So here's what I did the first time. I just used the lasso tool and made a selection of like the general shape of this negative space. Then I went to generative fill. If you don't see it, go to window, contextual taskbar. I just put in speech bubble um, and I'm of the impression that it will adapt to the cartoon style of the rest of the graphic. So you don't really need to put cartoon in there. Mm. 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 So these results are pretty bad, I'm gonna be honest. Um, you know, normally you wouldn't be using generative fill to recreate something, that's not really what it's for, for better or worse. So what I'm gonna do is just use this, because I think this is technically the closest thing of any of these results to this. I'm gonna zoom in, and then I'm going to threshold this to get rid of the green. Okay, and try to like darken it up as much as possible, like not that much. Okay, that's cool. And then I'm just going to right click, rasterize layer, and then I'm gonna right click, convert to smart object, and then I'm just gonna click the black here and hit command J. So now I've just got like this speech bubble on its own and then I'll size it up. I'm just gonna go in and remove this stuff and then I'm gonna blur this out so it looks a little bit closer to what we have on the left side. Like generative fill is fun to use, but it's so funny like once you start trying to use it in tutorials, you see like the kind of the flaws um, in AI where it's like, this wouldn't be a problem if I was just like using an element. I'm gonna merge these two layers together, merge layers, I'm gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Increase this a bit. This is actually an old trick that I learned from someone who drew comic books, was a comic book uh, illustrator. And they would actually use brightness, contrast, and Gaussian blur to just like get these soft um, edges back but I need it to be pretty bright because I don't want it to be super thick. All right, that'll work. I'll grab the magic wand tool, make sure anti-alias and contiguous are not checked at the top. Click the black, command J, hide this layer, zoom out, and now I can move this speech bubble over. I could even make it larger if I wanted to, but I think that works. Honestly, it has a little bit of like a freak Nick vibe. I think overall this whole graphic does. Um, next, we're going to add in the text. Gimme the ball. This is just something I heard Patrick Mahomes say, I think in like the AFC championship game. So I was just like, all right, I don't know, that could be cool. Same thing over here with the lasso tool and generative fill. Let's see what it gives us. Cartoon, speech, bubble. And I think originally I was like, oh, I'll have him saying something down here and I'll have him saying something here. Um, and then it just made like that sort of crumpled up piece of paper. And I was like, all right, whatever. See like right here, like I actually like those circles for some reason, I don't know. So I'm just gonna like generate more on top of it um, and see what it gives us. Now we're just sort of like, yeah, we're just having fun with it. Cartoon, speech bubble. Yeah, sure, okay, random stars, little speech bubble there, but I kind of like the stars, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep those. The final touch would be these little like hand-drawn lines around here, just extra details to sort of set the whole thing off and put the cherry on top, the proverbial design cherry. Um, so I'm gonna grab the brush tool. I'm gonna change the size to either six or four, probably four. And then I've created a new layer at the top here. And now I'll just like literally start drawing things in. That looks cool. I'm gonna merge all these layers together and then we'll mock it up and see how it looks on a t-shirt.
So I'm gonna highlight everything, Command G, duplicate it, hide this layer, right click, merge group. I'm gonna use the mockable plugin. Let's use a Rue Porter blank. Okay, let's go with Ultra Luxury T-shirt. I'll re-download this, open mockup. So our mockup is ready to go. I'm gonna jump back to the artwork and highlight this merged artwork layer. Command C to copy, jump back into our mockup and I'm gonna change the color to cream right away. And then under textures, I'm just gonna add the artwork layer in here. You can do it, I do it both ways to be honest. Sometimes I double click this and update the smart object. Sometimes I just drop it in here, um, do whatever you want. I can already tell it's gonna look dope. Uh, <laughs> right click and convert to smart object and then holding down shift to maintain the aspect ratio. I'll bring it down. Oh yeah, bro. You telling me that's not a t-shirt? That's a t-shirt. To get rid of this white, you could change the blend mode to multiply or you could keep it at normal and then double click the layer and then hold down the option key and we'll use blend if. And so if you click right there, you can split this like stopper and then you can slide it over and that gets rid of the white. But if you do it too far, it starts like making the whole thing lighter. We just wanna get rid of that initial white part, right? So there we go, 200, close to 200, 201. All right, so now I can move it around if we wanted to try out another color, let's say just like white. Heather Gray, definitely a vibe. If you like this video, all that I ask is you take one second and hit that subscribe button. It would truly mean the world to me. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.